The relationship between media and politics underwent a shift in the 1960s as the rise of television profoundly impacted how voters perceived candidates. In the last election, web-based media and social networks played a key role in defining the outcome of historical suffrage. I'm Nick Panamitros, and we discuss media and politics today on The Professor. From across the city and the seven city colleges of Chicago, broadcasting from 63rd and Halstead at Kennedy King College, The Professors, taking the art of conversation to a higher degree. Before we start the conversation, let's take a look at this student-produced video on today's subject. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like I, I like I, everybody likes I for president. In 1952, when television was coming of age, advertisers put together short, catchy TV spots for Dwight Eisenhower that ran during popular shows such as I Love Lucy. It reached more voters than any other form of advertising, charming by today's standards. Then came 1960. I should make it very clear that I do not think we're doing enough. There is no question but that this nation cannot stand still. The Kennedy-Nixon debates in 1960 were the first ever presidential debates carried on live TV. An estimated 70 million people tuned in. They were a game changer in the sport of politics. Nixon looked pale and tired while Kennedy was tanned and rested. After 1960, image became everything when choosing a candidate for president. American youth today has its fringes, but that's part of the greatness of our country. I have great faith in American youth. By 1968, Richard Nixon had learned his lesson about the power of TV images. His team put together a series of slick commercials. Nixon hired producer Roger Ailes, who said that TV is no gimmick, and nobody will ever be elected to major office again without presenting themselves well on it. Years later, Ailes served as a media consultant for President Ronald Reagan's re-election campaign in 1984. It's morning again in America. Today, more men and women will go to work than ever before in our country's history. Collectively called Morning in America, without directly attacking his opponent, the ad suggested Reagan had restored American optimism and asked, do we really want to go back to where we were four years ago? This afternoon. Roger Ailes popped up again in 1988 when he helped guide George H.W. Bush to a come-from-behind victory over Michael Dukakis. The revolving door TV ad portrayed Dukakis as an ineffective liberal who would gut the U.S. defense system and let convicted murderers out of prison. Dukakis fought back with his own TV ad, but it was too late. George Bush talks a lot about prison furloughs. As America fought two wars, one in Afghanistan, the other in Iraq, Senator John Kerry challenged President Bush in 2004. The Bush campaign attacked Kerry's war record in Vietnam with a series of ads. Kerry fought back, but it was too late. I'm John Kerry and I approve this message. The people attacking John Kerry's war record are funded by Bush's big money supporters. Most political observers agree that it was the 1960 presidential campaign and the modern era of TV that fundamentally altered political campaigns. The big lesson from those debates was that TV is not about rhetoric, it's about pictures. I think that this bomb policy has failed. Reporting for the professors on WYCC PBS Chicago, I'm Rick Lockhart. Joining us today for this conversation are professors Ted Williams from Kennedy King College, Temple Hemphill from Kennedy King College, Brian Brady from Mikva Challenge, and CM Winners Palacio from Malcolm X College. Welcome. Um, we saw the video, and I'd sort of like to start the uh, conversation with um, the U.S. Constitution First Amendment talking, I'd like to quote, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of the press. And when our founding fathers talked about um, allowing the media freedom, uh, there was no radio, there was no TV, there was no um, social network medias, things of the sort. So I'd like to start the conversation. Uh, is the media having a deleterious impact on politics? Uh, I would, uh, unfortunately, well, I would say obviously yes and no. So I would say yes in the sense that really elections have now become um, akin to choosing two brands of toothpaste. 
Uh, it's all really based on image. We really don't know what we're getting at the end of the day. Uh, and, you know, it's based on symbols and that sort of thing. Uh, and so, but on the flip side, I'm a person, obviously, I, I love media. Uh, I have a theater background. We, obviously, this show is important. And so I think the media has the power to, um, I think, uh, elevate the conversation in politics. But unfortunately, it has not. And I think that's the thing that I'm most concerned about. And we'll talk about it, I'm sure, but especially the influence of money and how that relates to the media. All right, because what's sexy is what sells. Yeah. And so ultimately, their numbers. And media you know, outlets are concerned with numbers. And, um, and so it's, it's an actual term, actually, mm -hmm. that's used in newsrooms and what have you. What's sexy? Is sure. it sexy? Um, and that is what yeah. sells. I mean, I find my students really have no concept, and not just my students, but most people I talk to on the street um, have no concept of the real policy distinctions between candidates, but they can tell you who they slept with, they can tell you whether they smoked marijuana when they were in college, and that sort of They're thing, underwear. because, yeah, <laughs> because those are the things that people that are, are catchy and people remember, uh, and it's an unfortunate, I think, dumbing down of the uh, American political process. Mm -hmm. I was thinking there's one thing that's different about today's politics. I think there's a quantity of coverage mm -hmm. everywhere you see coverage, yeah. but I think you see it's a, it's a million miles wide and an inch deep. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of it's laziness, too, uh, on the media's part. What, yeah. But it forces us to be smarter consumers, right? But yeah. the average person who's at home isn't necessarily, I mean, we have so many options in terms of media consumption. Sure. And so even as you just said, with, with politics, we have mm -hmm. so many options. Yeah. And, and that, that really is the problem, in my opinion, it, or the challenge, yeah. it, is the fact that we do have so many. And what you're finding is, and this is really discouraging if you think about it, the Nielsen ratings show that people really aren't watching politics. Um, American Idol is the number one show um, on the diff two different days that it comes on. The Voice is uh, second to that. In, I think NCSI and then C, oh no, NCIS and then CSI. And then the professors. My, and then <laughs> not the professors. <laughs> right. the professors. My kids got all of those except for the professors. Right, okay, right. I've never seen it out of my house. Right. But, ever. But check this out. That's yeah. very good. So, but, um, but the American Idol, uh, about 18 million people a week tune into that. Mm -hmm. The, the best political show, by comparison, is Meet the Press, and about 3 million people a week tune into that. So Americans are really not, unfortunately, very interested. They're more interested in these reality sort of celebrity shows. But I don't think it's that they're not interested. I think it's about what's being fed to them. Think Why? about it. I mean, there is, it's, <clears throat> is it ever really in the best interest of a news media organization whose goal is to make money to say, okay, so today we're going to present the real issues, and here's the flow chart, etc. I don't, I don't think that. I think, um, I think there's a little pandering that's going on, okay. but I think there's a little bit of a WD forty effect going on as well too. I look at the recent, um, the recent, I call it the recent tirade in the media about uh, working about moms mm -hmm. who stay at home, and and I just watch the media really attempt to make an issue. Yeah, out of it, so. and that to the point that I was like, okay, it's to me. I thought that was one of the best examples of like, okay, if you don't think the media is 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 not a fair, is not playing fair in all of this, mm -hmm. that would have been the best case to watch sure. because I just watched the Fox and I watched CNN that just kept trying to spin it and spin it and spin it in order to like incite mm -hmm. a riot over something that, to me, I felt was just so benign and taken out of context. Well, you know, that goes to media monopolies. I mean, mm -hmm. there's about five or six companies that pretty much own all the networks. I happen to write down one of them. Uh, uh, AOL Time Warner owns American Online, Netscape, uh, Communications, mm -hmm. Time Life Books, Sports Illustrated, HBO, CNN, <laughs> Warner Brothers, and Disney owns ABC, 10 TV stations, 28 radio stations, 11 cable stations, and and a whole bunch of other stuff. So you have five giants, sure. you know, who can keep the status quo, who controls the status quo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, so. on, and, and on top of that, if you look at who's funding these campaigns, Time Warner is in the top go. ten um, sure. funders for President Obama. And so, uh, and I'm sure that they're obviously probably funding folks on the other side, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so what you find is, is that their influence uh, is having a ne negative impact, um, not only, obviously, in the work that they do, but they're behind the scenes funding campaigns. And uh, I think it's, that's a real problem. We have to have independent outlets, and we also have to have, I think, more education 
And I would love to see it done in a way that is entertaining so we can compete with the Dancing with the Stars, that sort of thing. Isn't it a little too easy, though, to blame the media in the, and then the corporate money behind it? Because I think if you really get to their decision, I mean, Roger Ailes at Fox definitely is pushing an agenda, and probably MSNBC <laughs> is pushing an agenda. But I think they're mostly pushing eyeballs. And let's face it, the people tune in to Kim Kardashian and, and, and that mm -hmm. show. Is it really the media reflecting our shallow taste as consumers? But then, you know, you do get people like, uh, I mean, Jon Stewart in some ways is more insightful in his cast, mm -hmm. newscast, than the, the evening news Absolutely. sometimes. Do you watch yeah. Bill Maher? Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. so, I mean, that's always pol political. I yeah. mean, and I think that's entertainment. I think it's a total combination. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think so you raise are... a good, uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I mean, to cut you yeah. off, but I think you also raise a good point about where is the mutual responsibility. Yeah. And I know with the McCormick Foundation <laughs> and um, even here at the City College of Chicago, they're rolling out news information literacy courses because there is really a lack of skills and in judgment on how do we actually take that news report to determine is it really news or is it really noise? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, if you, look, go, if you go back as far as Socrates, he objected, okay, to the deleterious effect of just the alphabet, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, it's in, it's in okay. the literature. So yeah. Uh, with the advent of you know, radio, TV, point on mass media, you have this uh, control, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that can be projected. And but the question is, is it the media controlling politics, or is <clears throat> politics basically controlling the media? Or is there a shallow circle that uh, we're it, all playing it back a and dance forth, or yeah. you know, what what is it? Well, I, I think, think it's a circle, but it's a very yeah. small circle. It's not as wide as you think it is. I think they're both playing each other. And, and I, I, I will say that I do believe that the agendas are, are very important to kind of how the media works. So, yes, on the one hand, it is about getting people to watch. But, you know, say current TV has a very clear agenda and what they want. Um, Fox has a very clear agenda. CNN, although they say they don't, they've got a pretty clear agenda a lot of times as well. Yeah. And so I think for me that is the major problem, the, the thing that I, I find to be most problematic is that if you're going to feed me these things and you're just trying to get me to, to watch, okay, that's okay. But don't do it with your agenda, you know, behind the door. Yeah, behind it. Uh, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's relatively insulting. And, and, and what happens is because these outlets are giving news, then the news that we get is really not, you know, it's not pure, if you will. And that's a real problem, I think. Well, the news, I mean, the media can spotlight what they want, and they're also gatekeepers. So are people drifting to listen or watch media that just they want to get reinforcement for their political beliefs, or are they going there and getting converted? Well, I'll tell you, what I've been doing in the last year is actually, I'm, I'm fairly liberal, um, maybe a bit conservative, but overall, I, I'd say I'm liberal. And however, I politically do liberal. Uh, politically. Um, However, I do, in the last year, I've been watching more um, conservative um, and listening to conservative shows so that I know what the other side's saying, so that I'm smarter. And it's sometimes a challenge to stomach <laughs> some of what is being said, but it's my intent, my intent is to become smarter, so at least I really understand both sides. So are you willing to shift and mm -hmm. change? If you find an argument on the other side, it's good? There are times when I do yeah. agree with the other side. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, I am I think that's being a smart consumer yeah. of media. Mm -hmm. And see the, but see, the problem with that, what, what she's saying, I think, uh, speaks to a larger problem in American political uh, politics. Why is it that we have to be on side? So why is it that Fox has to show one side, CNN? Where are the independent sources that say, hey, we're going to present, and actually, you know, I will say this as a plug to our own show, obviously, here, uh, <laughs> you know, is that I do, I'm refreshed by the independence of the conversation because uh, we're not, you know, pundits, and we're not just trying to give, uh, you know, the, the talking points for the different sides. So the challenge that she's uh, sharing is a challenge that I find as a consumer of media myself I don't want to hear your position. I don't want to hear your position. I want to hear the truth somewhere. Well, that here's what we were saying earlier. That is challenging. Mm -hmm. I went through one of the top journalism programs um, in undergrad, and we were taught to give both sides. Mm -hmm. But I'm from originally, grew up partially in California mm -hmm. with a lot of Hispanics and, 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 um, and Asians, and then also was raised in Gary, Indiana, totally black community. Mm -hmm. So my lens, when I'm out in the field reporting, I'm bringing all those experiences. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'm not, I, I 
remember early in my career as a TV reporter, I purposely did not have African Americans without teeth mm -hmm. um, in terms of if I'm out in the field. I didn't want that projected, those images, right? Because as a gatekeeper, I realized in the field I had some say. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, I, it's, but maybe the person without the teeth or, you know, would have been the best source, right? Yeah. So it, I <laughs> know. Yeah. Sam and I both are thinking of a ton of jokes. We can yeah. Yeah. And I think we're well, trying to be I'm good not, today. I'm not know, exaggerating so. here. That would sometimes be the case. I, I, you. But I understand what you're saying because you don't want to perpetuate the stereotype because for us, when we watch the news, if there's ever a soundbite of what happened in the community, it just feels as if they give the most despondent-looking person, and you just be like, really, again? So I, I understand what you're saying, but you're right. That, that, that person that may have that look that may not be appealing is perhaps the one that does have all the facts. You're right. Yeah. So I think the most, there's a whole. <laughs> Teeth are overrated. Yeah. Teeth, toothpaste, that. <laughs> you Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. I think, I was, I think that's part of, part of it today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, you'll talk about floss probably. And, <laughs> so, uh, but, but I think what's hopeful about the modern media right now is that there are there's a plethora of sources sure. happening right now and, and media people are creating their own media mm -hmm. uh, and I think the scary thing about that is we're all going into our own echo chamber mm -hmm. so if you if you like John Stewart you watch him but you don't watch Fox so we're not doing what Temple's doing and looking at the other sides mm -hmm. uh, I'm forcing news. myself to do it yeah, yeah. because it, it's I Good understand it's necessary but right. it's not always been my but I think that's because in the market people really under estimate the value of research you're right people don't do their own research even mm -hmm. about the candidates all mm -hmm. they know is based on the sound bites and into mm -hmm. some instances you're right I agree that there's a certain layer of intellectual laziness yeah. but I do believe that the media plays on that intellectual Absolutely. laziness Absolutely. in order to say okay look if I've got a good if I've got a good hook or if I can catch my candidate giving me the dumb face yeah. and then I play it 20 times sure. immediately I can attack that person's credibility yeah. because of the image yeah. that I perpetuated for the past two weeks. Yeah, and social media is obviously very exciting because yeah. uh, there are new ways to raise money. You know, the Red Cross recently just raised eight million dollars for for yeah, uh, uh, relief a website. Um, on Twitter, <laughs> uh, right? And um, but and so what you're seeing is a shift in the way people are consuming media. So if you're under 35, you're more likely to watch things through your um, computer or through your uh, your phone. But if you're over 35, I find this to be actually very interesting. The um, time that you spend, Americans spend about 35 hours a week watching TV, the time goes up the older that you get. And TV, even though social media is very important, TV still is the most popular medium that we use. We still spend uh, something like $117 billion a year on TV advertising, and it's by far the most. So social media is changing the game, right. but don't ever underestimate the power of TV. It doesn't appear that it's really actually going anywhere. Even though people are saying that the you know so TV is still very important. Well, well, TV is point on mass. Uh, social media is people, to pe person to person basically. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have a totally different dynamic uh, uh, it, as more of it uh, you know m as younger folks get older and probably continue mm -hmm. with it. Sure. It's the older folks that haven't gotten into it. I think. Mm -hmm. What bothers me most about TV these days though is that there's 20 talking heads who get to mm -hmm. interpret politics for us. I remember Cokie sure. Roberts saying before uh, President Obama was elected, oh, he's relying on young people, and young people won't show up to the polls, mm -hmm. as if she knew what young people were thinking, right. and young people did show up and get him elected. Right. Uh, so I just think these 20 gatekeepers, and then they're on the air all the time, that they're not saying things fresh, they're just saying the horse race. Mm -hmm. Oh, Romney's up a point, Obama's up a point, and there's very little depth to their conversation. And I think that causes apathy in yes. terms of when you talk mm. about the numbers of folks who do not watch the political shows, I think they're, it's apathy because it's, it's just a lack um, of a belief that something new will be um, uh, discovered in terms of something um, important. Yeah. We're, we're in a depression, honestly. Yeah. I mean, not in a depression, sorry. Oh, yes, uh -huh. we are. I'm loopy yeah. today. Yeah. Um, Last show, she said we're out of the, the recession. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're in no, depression. I'm, okay. I'm going to retract like that. that. Okay. So we're coming out of recession. Of course, some folks are saying we may double dip. And, and, and so people wanted to escape, right? And so watch The yeah. Voice versus Meet the Press. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, right. people want to escape from their reality. Well, let me and ask you this, Phil Temple. In your training, though, mm -hmm. 
Because I know when I look at the news and I look at newscasters, or sometimes even when I read the articles, but I know we're specifically talking about the TV. TV. Yeah. I said TV. Mm -hmm. We're talking about TV. Is that like TV or just <laughs> new? That's my new product. Yeah. <laughs> I always look and I just go, is that journalism? Wait, are you talking about newscasters? Just cast? when you look at the newscasters or you look at the quality of shows that are coming out, I'm like, is that really journalism? Newscasts. The, that's that, not, that's it doesn't still journalism. feel like journalism. It feels oh. like little auditions for talk shows. No, no, no. Yeah. What, are you talking about just your standard 5 o'clock news? That's still I'm journalism. I'm talking about when I look at, yeah, even that. Sometimes I look at the, 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 the quality of information that's being, that's being given, and I look at the way that the, the news reporter reacts to well, certain, when he delivers certain sure. shows. And I, I, one time I remember, I even called the station about this, is that, um, they were talking about the um, uh, Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. He was in town, and they had Savior's Day. Mm -hmm. And they were doing, you know, he always convenes at a large center, and they have their speech or whatever. And I remember hearing the journalists first giving the facts, but then giving, like, these undercurrent remarks. Sure, of course. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember. That's that. happening And I was a lot. like, how That's is that considered journalism? I mean, I really called Absolutely. in and complained about but that. It, ha it happens all the time. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. I Newsweek I think is doing a lot of that. I, I mean, we talk about magazines. Sure. It's called, you know, you, you analyze what, you know, the topic is. So you're not just giving the facts. Sure. Well, I think, I think, here's the deal. I don't have a problem with people having biases, but put them on the table, right? So say ahead of time that, hey, you know, I'm totally for this issue, and now I'm going to interview you and, and basically put my position. But don't yeah. do that. I, it drives me up a wall when that happens. But social media uh, is got, will get you around that problem because you'll be able to interact and, and, and type something back, and they'll answer sure, you and sure. go back and forth. Sure, absolutely. Like I said, point on mass, you just can't answer back. You have to call the, you know, exactly. the station or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. So that's just part of the game. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, there were polls done about 50 years ago that said one in three uh, individuals thought that media was inaccurate, mm -hmm. and that poll was taken again in 1986, and they thought it was the same. Mm -hmm. But in 2007, 61 percent of the folks thought that it was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Media. What's going on? I, th I think they're, in some ways they're, they're educated consumers. There is a lot of inaccuracies in TV, and it's kind yeah. of a healthy thing that, that yeah. there's a lot of distrust among the people. And, you know, I, I look back at what you were saying about the commentary going with the news, mm -hmm. and I think I somewhat, uh, Maureen Dowd, I think, started reporting on Bill Clinton in the 90s, and she was the journalist in, at the White House, but she started to weave in her own commentary sure. underneath. And I, I think in some ways she started the floodgates. If the New York Times <laughs> can start to weave in snarky comments mm -hmm. about his tie, uh, yeah. I, the gates were flown open. And so now there, I think objectivity in reporting is. But yeah. I thought that. Uh, but I, I thought I, at one time I was a journalism major, and then I switched. Okay. Me too. But cool. I yeah. thought yeah, that I that's I where that. you drew the line. There yeah. is journalism, and then there are editorials. Yes. yes. Right, and it's right. gotten muddy. But, yeah, right. but you know, I, the other thing that bothers me that we haven't talked about is the myopic focus of the uh, the news uh, media here. So what happens is we don't necessarily no. look at problems long term, and we do not look beyond our shores. And this is a problem that I find when you watch foreign news. Oh. You watch the BBC; it is like night and day. It's like it we're living is. on two different planets. And RT News, yeah, which absolutely. You can see on Channel Twenty as absolutely. well. Absolutely, another good the twelve o'clock. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. And I do. <laughs> but really, but honestly, because I was watching the, I was watching the uh, with the five, six o'clock, the national news last night. And I watched all three, you know, flicking back and forth, and it was the same five stories. Mm -hmm. Same. And literally, you've got controversies, crises going on, on all over the world that you never hear about in our mainstream news media. Never. And it really, really, it, it's very disheartening. You know Spanish what's more news. disappointing is when you watch yeah. BBC and you will hear about something that's happening in the States. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> no, <that> what? Was... <laughs> <laughs> or you watch RT News and you're sure. like, what? Yeah. How come that wasn't on, on, well, on the 5 o'clock news? news yeah. Spanish TV kills uh, oh, English yes. news on, sure. on community news in Chicago. Absolutely. But American politics is very uh, polarized, two, two sides. So I think that's that plays into all of this too. That you only have two sides uh, to deal with, and you know, you look at other countries. There's multi part. There's many parties. There's you know, 15 parties, mm -hmm. and so you'll get different. Um, uh, journalists from different parties, mm -hmm. and so you'll get different points of view. Here in the United States, it's pretty much either Democratic or Republican, maybe a third party opinion. I think this program here is just, you know, anything, and that's one sure. of the things uh, uh, that makes it unique. Uh, final thoughts, uh, Ted? 
Um, I, uh, independence, independence, independence. I think it's very important in the media. Um, there is an, an increasingly large segment of the uh, electorate that can classify themselves as independent. And uh, I am um, of the mind that the news media must break out of the two-party partisan game if you really want to educate people because people tune out when they see that that's where we're coming from. And so um, our independence is very important uh, as people in the media, uh, which we are, uh, and I think that we, we help to elevate the conversation by having different views. Sure. You know, uh, politics is not a spectator sport, so I get my, draw my inspiration from if we can get young people actually participating, creating their own media, getting out there and being political, that, 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 so, then the media will follow them. Um, and I think youth media is really growing uh, in Chicago and elsewhere, and that's a hopeful sign. Sure. Uh, I agree with what, what both of you said, especially you. Um, it's important to remain engaged, mm -hmm. um, especially living in Chicago. You, I tell even my writing students and who aren't even in media, um, meaning uh -huh. through English, you have to understand Chicago politics if you're going to remain in Chicago. You have to understand politics because it's just, Survive. it's a part of economy, everything. Everything's yeah. connected to politics. Whether we want to embrace that or not, it's the reality. Yeah. I would just say my final thoughts when it comes to media and politics, they're like, they're a bad relationship. I think they're a bad relationship. They're just a bad relationship. <laughs> <laughs> With no hope of reconciliation. No, no right. hope of reconciliation. The divorce so come wow. and it. Yeah, huh? <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on The Professors.